So let me ask a question, and I really want you to think about this one. What percentage of driving, racing, is mental, and what percentage is physical? I mean, I know that driving a race car is a physical activity. It takes a lot of strength, stamina, a lot of physical activity. But think about it this way. Your body doesn't do anything unless your brain tells it to do so. So you could make the argument that it's 100% mental. What we do know is that there's a real mental game in racing. So let's take a little bit of a look at this because the best drivers know how to control their mind and use their mind to their advantage. The, the worst drivers don't. Uh, we see that all the time, unfortunately. So let's take a look at what I call the performance model. And basically it's how we as humans perform doing whatever, whether it's driving a race car, playing golf, tennis, playing the piano, whatever. And here's how it works. Basically look at it this way. Information comes into our brain while we're driving a car and it comes into our brain, it gets processed by our brain based on the software or the programming in our brain, and then we get an output. And that output is hands, arms, leg, feet, our body, move the wheel, move the pedals, work, work the car, and use it to our advantage. So if you think about it that way, it's input, processing, and an output, much like a computer. So you can look at your brain much like a computer. And again, based on the programming or the software, and by the way, your programming, your software is different than mine or anybody else's. We're all programmed to do different things in different ways. Basically, driving a car, we have to be programmed to drive it. So let's look at how we get that information into our brain. When we're driving a car, it's primarily through our senses, and primarily through three senses. Visual, our eyesight. Can't drive a car if you're blind for very long, right? Uh, secondly, it's kinesthetic. Basically, kinesthetic is our sense of touch or feel, it's also our sense of balance and something called the proprioceptive system, which is forces pushing against our body, our G-forces pushing against our body, and our body counteracting that and taking a read of how much force is against our body. So that's kinesthetic. The third one is auditory, our hearing. We get a lot of feedback, or a lot of information comes into our brain through our hearing. We hear the tires, we hear the sound rushing past the car, the air rushing past the car, uh, engine, brakes, tires, all sorts of noises. And all of that helps us determine what the car is doing. So if you think about it that way, there's actually, the better the information that comes into our brain, the better the quality of the information coming into our brain, the better the quality of the output's gonna be, the better we're gonna drive. So if, we, if you simply just work on improving the quality of the sensory input that comes into our brain, we're gonna get a better quality drive or better quality performance. Probably the most effective, most uh, productive tool or strategy that I've used in coaching race drivers is something I call sensory input sessions. And here's how it works. I'll send a driver out on the track and all I want that driver to do for that period of time, whether it's five laps, five minutes, 15 minutes, whatever, all I want them to do is focus on consciously taking in better quality information through their visual sense at this point in time. So it'd be a, just a strictly a visual sensory input session. They drive around the track at speed, gotta drive at speed because that's what we're, what we're used to seeing. But the driver consciously works on improving the amount of information, what they take in through their, through their eyes, and they do that over a period of time, and therefore, or after a while, it just becomes subconscious. They don't no longer have to think about it. Second session would be a kinesthetic session where the driver just goes on the track and feels everything about the car. The weight transfer, the balance, vibrations, feedback through the steering. Does the steering wheel get heavier or lighter as the driver turns through the, through the corner? Uh, you know, how much vibration comes up through the chassis, through the seat, the G-forces as they build and let go, vibrations back through the pedals, feedback through the pedals. All of those things are all part of the kinesthetic sense. And if the driver just focuses on that, that specifically kinesthetic uh, sense for that period of time, they're gonna get better quality information coming in. Then the third one would be an auditory session where the driver just goes on the track and listens to everything they can hear. The air rushing past the car or helmet, the sound of the tires as they, as they grip and, and slide through the turn, the sound of the engine, brakes, gearbox, everything. So in that period of time, probably 75 to 80% of the time, drivers actually turn their best lap times ever when they're doing these sensory input sessions. A lot of people go, well, why would that work? And if you, th if you think about it, for two reasons. One is the sensory input focusing on that, it's giving the brain better information to work with. And secondly, by distracting your mind from trying so hard, you actually relax and just drive the car. 
How many of you ever turned your fastest lap time when you're trying really hard? It rarely ever happens. So that number one thing of just taking in better quality information and putting into the brain, you're going to perform better. Second part of this is if we can improve the quality of the programming or the software in the brain, we're going to get better output. So how do you build programming? How do you build software in your brain? Well, you can do it through physical practice, but what's the problem with that? It costs a lot of money. It takes a lot of, uh, a lot of effort. We've got to take a car to the track. We've got to do all this stuff. And there's a chance of you making mistakes. There's another way of doing it, though, and that is through mental imagery or what's typically called visualization. Unfortunately, by the, the very definition of the term visualization, we're only using the visual sense. What I'm talking about here is, call, is mental imagery, where we close our eyes, relax our body and our brain, and get to that nice, deep, relaxed state, where then we can program the brain by imagining every last detail of driving, even the emotions that are involved with driving, the, you know, what you do and how you feel the car, all of those things, but you use those three senses. You use your visual, you see yourself doing it, you feel the car, and you actually move your hands and legs and feet, and you actually feel that what the car is doing in your imagination. And thirdly, you hear every last little bit of it. So you're using all three of the senses that you use when you're driving the car to, to program your brain. And if you do it over and over and over again, it's just like driving a car. In fact, sometimes it's actually more effective than actually driving it in real life. The greatest athletes in the world, every great athlete, doesn't matter what they're involved in, use mental imagery. If you want to be successful, if you want to be a great driver, you have to learn how to use mental imagery. And to do that, you need to do it every day. In fact, I recommend doing it twice a day. Once just before you go to sleep, and then once first thing in the morning. If you do that over and over again, you will program your brain. And you'll improve the software in your brain. So, third part of this is we can actually improve the processing speed of our brain. This gets a little tricky and we're almost getting into a little brain science here, but basically our brain is made up of two hemispheres, left hemisphere, right hemisphere. Left hemisphere is kind of the logical, factual, detail-oriented side of the brain, whereas the right hemisphere of the brain is more the intuitive, artistic, it sees the big picture. Well, what part of the brain do we need to use when we're driving a car to perform at our best? Both. To do that, there is something between the hemispheres of the brain. It's like a, almost like a printer cable connecting the hemispheres of the brain that allows the bioelectrical communication between the hemispheres of the brain to occur. And there are certain movements, simply just doing a cross-crawl movement where we're moving our hands and legs across our body, that movement, just doing this kind of a movement, will actually integrate the brain and make the, both sides of the brain work better. And therefore, it actually, the brain works together as an integrated unit, as opposed to the brain operating either left brain or right brain. When we're like that, it's called disintegrated, meaning the brain is not integrated. And certain things that we do, particularly in a race car, will actually disintegrate the brain. One of those that a lot of drivers do, they don't do it on purpose, but they do it, is holding your breath. When we hold our breath, there is a it triggers something in the brain triggers part of your program in your brain to think of fear, anxiety. And when we have fear and anxiety, our brain tends to disintegrate, meaning both sides of the brain are not working together. So just learning to breathe in the car and practicing breathing while you're driving on the track will actually improve your mental performance. So doing that simple cross-crawl movement prior to getting into the car, by the way, there are Formula One drivers that do this, Doing that just before you get in the car will actually help integrate the brain and make your brain process information more quickly. So those are three strategies or techniques that you can use to help improve your mental performance. Again, taking better quality sensory input by focusing on taking that sensory input in, using mental imagery to program your brain or build better software, and doing some physical movements that will actually integrate the brain and allow you to process information more quickly. So those are just three keys that you can use to help improve your mental performance. After all, if you don't understand how to use your brain to your best, to your advantage, there are other drivers that will and they're going to beat you. So your brain is driving your car, so use it to your advantage.